Well, hello everybody and welcome to Life at Home and uh, good evening to you on this Wednesday evening where we're going to have one little worship song and then I want to get right to the word because the scriptures we're using tonight so blessed me. As a matter of fact, why don't you grab your Bibles? We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 2 verses 1, 2, and 3. Well, let's pray and then let's have a worship song and... If you know this one, please sing along with me. It's a fun song. Father, it is in Jesus' wonderful name that we are before you now, thanking you for being our Father, worshiping you because you are God alone. We ask that you would bless this night. We ask that you would encourage each of our hearts through the word. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful name, everybody says. Amen. It's my joy to lay my life down. Cause when I lose my life for your sake, it'll be found. And everything I give is nothing compared to the surpassing worth of getting to have you. And the joy is found in the laying down, so I give it all to you. And the joy is found in the laying down, so I give it all to you. Yeah. Hey. It's my joy to lay my life down Cause when I lose my life for your sake it'll be found Everything I give is nothing compared to The surpassing worth of getting to have you And the joy is found in the laying down so I Give it all to you. Yes, the joy is found in the laying down, so I give it all to you. I let go so I can take hold of you. can't take hold of you. Ooh, yeah. hey, it's my joy to lay my life down. Come on. It's my joy to lay my life down. You can do it. It's my joy to lay my life down. One more time. It's my joy to lay my life down. <laughs> Praise God. Boy, what a wonderful thing if we could each find that every single day that it is a joy to lay our lives down, our will down. Uh, what we want to do as opposed to what God would want to do for our lives. So, yeah, that song kind of gets me charged up. Well, let's see. Looking forward to uh, this Friday's uh, Zoom prayer meeting. And we hope that uh, you can all join us because everybody is welcome to join us. Uh, it is Dave Clark who is the holder of the secret code <laughs> to get us into that Zoom meeting. But... I want to just share again that last Friday I was so blessed uh, by that prayer time, hearing everybody's prayers. Uh, we even had a wonderful presentation by uh, Helen Clark on uh, how things are going as far as the virus is in here, here in Orange County. And actually things are up a little in Orange County, so Lord bring those down. Uh, but uh, at any rate, okay, you have your Bible, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. 
I'm calling this teaching Lest We Drift Away. So let's pray again, shall we? Father, I lift up before you every heart that hears this, every heart that sees this, Lord. I know, Father, you have a perfect plan, a perfect will for each of our lives, and I pray, Father, nothing would keep us from it. Father, I pray for anybody who's struggling with nearness to you, perhaps by trial or by struggle or by falling to temptation. Pray, Father, you'd use this, Lord, like, like a big fishnet, Lord. Use this to draw us all back in close to you. And I ask this in Jesus' precious name. And again, everybody says, amen. Well, <clears throat> if you've been watching the news, you've noticed that uh, states are breaking free right now. <laughs> And we're hitting phase two here in California. And uh, how many phases are there in California? Is it 18? I... <laughs> okay, it may feel like it. But uh, it, it, it seems like uh, it's an exciting time as uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday, a lady, and she was telling me that she, she and her husband are so happy because he actually went back to work what day was it? Was it Monday. Monday? He went back to work for the first time in almost three full months. And so he was very happy, actually, to get back to work. I think a lot of people are going to find themselves getting back to work. I think that uh, it's an exciting time. We'll see how this works out. And I'm sure that I have been sitting around in this house uh, far too much. I've been being a little more of a couch potato that I ought to be. And so I need to start moving again because as that old song went, you got to move it, move it, right? So we need to do that. In fact, I'm hearing things from people like, I need to get back into the gym. Uh, I feel like I'm gaining too much weight. And so uh, it kind of reminds me of the recent story I heard uh, where a husband stepping off of a scale recently I had a very long, sad face, and seeing that his weight had been steadily going up over the last several weeks, he remarked to his wife, and he said to her, do you think my chin is getting fat? And uh, to which his wife, with a loving grin, said, uh, which, which chin would that be? <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad when you got to start counting them. Anyway, that's a cute little story, but the point I want to make is get ready for some changes. Get ready for some adjustments. Get ready because we are all heading into a brand new normal. Kind of like uh, we're heading off, well, <laughs> we're heading off a cliff. No, I didn't mean to say that. We, how about this? We are boldly going <laughs> where no country has ever gone before. So that's kind of exciting. But we need to adjust uh, I mean, I was thinking about this uh, a couple of days ago, and I thought, I was remembering last summer as the summer weather is starting to come in. And I was thinking to myself, what if somebody walked up to me or walked up to you last summer, came up to you and said, next summer, people will be locked in their homes and everybody, well, the majority of people going outside will be wearing masks. How would you take that if you heard that back then? You would say, okay, this is a new kind of crazy here. Uh, this person is a real uh, nut, an absolute nut. But yet, here we are. That's the situation that we find ourselves in. So what do we need to do? What do we need to be mindful of in regards to our faith? in regards to walking with the Lord that we need to be aware of before we start walking out that door, before we start going back to work, and before the Lord ends this time out, if indeed that's what he's doing right now. So those are the kind of things I want us to be thinking about. And let me read the verses that I believe the Lord led me to for us this evening. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 says, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience reserved a, received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect 
so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard it. Wow, those are pretty exciting verses. Uh, they got me tuned up. Hey, that's a good way to put it. I hope these verses get us spiritually tuned up as the world begins to change around us. I heard the story of an old farmer with uh, many years of experience who made this comment about milking cows, which uh, really is a comment about life in general because he said, the hardest thing about milking those cows, observed the farmer, is that they never stay milked. <laughs> well, of course, that is just saying to us that uh, each day there are things that we have to do all over again. There are things that we have to do again and again. This is true of so many things in life. So many things in life have to be done over and over again. It's like saying, how do you keep something nice? Well, <laughs> you have to take good care of it every day. So it is with faith and with living a vital daily relationship with God. Sometimes you might ask a friend something like, hey, how's, uh, how's the wife doing? How's your marriage going? And sometimes you may hear back, well, things are okay, but I'll tell you what, we, we need some time apart together, and I hope that happens soon. We need some time alone. Or you might hear something like, well, actually, we've been kind of drifting apart. Oops. If that's the case, you need to jump on it right away and get things back to being right. Well, what if the question of the day was, the question of the day, why don't you tell me, how's your relationship with God doing? How was it today, your relationship with God? Did you guys meet? Did you hang out together? Did you have any conversations? Did you learn something new from him? Are you close? Or perhaps have you been drifting away from the Lord? I remember the old saying, if you feel far from God, guess who moved? Here is where we are today. In chapter 1 of Hebrews, I think of it in this regards. To me, Hebrews chapter 1 it speaks of, it tells us when you hear God speaking today, it is actually the voice of the Son of God that we hear. And what is pointed out to us is that Jesus is superior to the Old Testament prophets, to the angels, to anybody else you can mention. It is the book of Hebrews way of saying exactly what John tells us in his gospel account. John chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 14. Let me put those two together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. In other words, God the Son took on human form as God's final, decisive Word to the world in regards to His love and in regards to salvation. Jesus is it. Someone might say, well, how about them angels, though? <laughs> They're pretty special, and I think a lot of people like to talk about angels, and that's cool, I suppose, though they don't want any reward at all for what they do. That's obvious. They don't want any attention for what they do. That's obvious, too, in the scriptures. But, uh, yes, angels do carry messages for God. The letter here of Hebrews actually addresses that as well and tells us that angels are great, that's pretty much what it says. Angels are splendid, but Jesus is God with us. What a comparison that is. So, God has spoken by his Son, and the Son is creator, sustainer, owner, ruler, and redeemer of the world. That is such a cause 
for celebration. That's what that is. That's what Hebrews chapter one is, a cause for celebration. Uh, because it is Jesus, believer, that we have put our faith in. So how are we? <laughs> and in what way should we, should we be ready to respond to who Jesus is? And I'm not talking about just a one-time shot. I'm talking about how should our lives want to respond daily to Jesus? So chapter two then begins with a tremendous exhortation, a tremendous challenge that we could call this. We could call this a command that comes after the celebration over the identity of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter one, celebration of identity of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter two begins with how then should we respond? You could even call these first three verses, as I looked at them, the first loving command in the book of Hebrews for believers. And here it is. Let me read it again. Therefore, the therefore refers to chapter one. We must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. You give prophets respect is what this book was telling the readers. You even give angels respect. What about Jesus? Actually, what about Jesus as compared to anyone else? What about Jesus as compared to everything else? In fact, those words have the greatest... No, let's, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Tell me whose words have the greatest impact on your life? Uh, I suppose somebody might say, well, my wife or my boss or maybe my kids or your kids might say maybe my parents. But you tell me, whose words have the greatest impact on your life? Wow. Let's look a bit closer then to this command. See if we can't help answer that question for us through the word. It says, therefore, we must give the more earnest heed. And by the way, earnest heed would mean you're listening some, to something with the idea of doing it. Uh, kind of like, you know, they call uh, stop signs in California. Sometimes they call them people doing a rolling stop. Besides, that's an oxymoron. There's no such thing as a rolling stop. You're either stopped or you're not. Uh, at any rate, uh, a rolling stop, you look at the stop sign, but you're really not heeding it. You just roll right through it. Somebody who heeds a stop sign is somebody who sees it and then actually stops and does what it says. So that's the difference between heeding and just hearing. So therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. So what are the things that we have heard? And that takes us right back to that word, therefore. The first word in Hebrews chapter 2 is therefore. Therefore takes us back to chapter 1. And chapter 1 is talking about the celebration of the identity of Jesus Christ. So it could be said like this. Since, or because, or therefore, since God has spoken by his Son, who is the creator, sustainer, owner, ruler, and redeemer of the world, because of that, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. We have been given good news. Jesus left heaven to came here, to come here on a seek and save mission, and his seek and save mission was to save you. He had you in mind when he came here. So let me ask, if Jesus came on a seek and save mission, then can you answer this? Did Jesus find you? And since Jesus found you, have you put all things well back in second position to him? You know, I wonder if after we die, that God could ask one question to settle the issue of heaven or hell. Are you ready for this? God could simply ask every single person, what did you do with my son? And that would settle the issue. 
So for us, oh, how wonderful. That should cause us rejoicing with, with our hearts and our lives. We've been able to and are continually answering that question. God the Father, what did you do with my son? Oh my goodness, well, Father, I love your son. I have not only heard his words, but now, Lord, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I am heeding the words of the Savior. And that's where we all need to be. That's where we all want to be. That's where the greatest blessings are. That's where eternal life is. We should be running to that. So let's take a look at this. Largely, the book is written to folks who have heard the words of Jesus. As a matter of fact, at the time this was written, some of these people that it was written to are still alive who had actually seen Jesus, who had actually heard him, who had actually watched his miracles raise people from the dead, as well as he being raised from the dead. So you can imagine that. This letter written to those folks who actually knew Jesus before he raised from the dead and, and is in, sitting in heaven at the right hand of the Father waiting to come back. So they recognized who Jesus is. They recognized him as Savior. But the problem is, and what he was talking about is, that somehow they were being tempted back into a religious observances, religious observances in order to try and please God that way. Please God by being good. Well, you may be able to do some good, I suppose, but what about all the bad? What do you deal with that? Uh, you know, the goodness doesn't take away the badness. It would be like, uh, you know, it would be like being in court and being convicted of a crime. Yeah, you did it. And you say to the judge before he sentences you, yeah, judge, I know I did those wrong things, but you know what? I did a lot of good things too. The judge isn't going to accept that. Not if it's a just judge, he's not going to. You did the crime, uh, you paid the time. Unless it's Jesus who paid the time for you on the cross taking your judgment on himself as your substitute. That's what I did with your son. I accepted him as a substitute for my great sinning. And I'm thankful, Father, that you sent a great Savior. So here's what we need to know. Uh, drifting away happened to them, some of them. And if it happened to some of them, guess what? It can happen to some of us. We can slip out of thankfulness and into complaining. We can slip out of humility and slip into pride. We can drift out of love for each other and into a judgmental spirit. Oh, God save us from that. We can be puffed up with knowledge of the scriptures that I now know and forget that it is love that builds up and it is love that's meant to bind us together. You may have the truth, but if you don't have love, if you don't have glue that glues you to other believers, what good is it? We can slip out of dying to the self-centered life and get stuck wanting worldly pleasures for the moment. Look, this word speaks to me and Really, this word speaks to us all. Let me ask, have you known anyone who has perhaps been raised in the scriptures or who has spent a good deal of time in the word of God and then for some crazy reason, you know, they stopped listening earnestly to the word of God and just began to drift away? Have I told you before that everybody is an example? I think I've told you that. Every single person is an example. Some people are examples of what not to do, and others are an example of what to do. So, look, here's something wonderful. I just thought I would throw in a wonderful scripture here that makes me happy. Here's a scripture that makes Pastor Paul happy. <laughs> Psalms 16, verse 11, and this is directed to the Lord, and it says, you will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forevermore. Doesn't that make you happy? I mean, that's just a beautiful verse of scripture. Can you believe that some folks would be willing to drift away from this for some temporary high, if you will? 
I actually think of the reaction of the disciples when Jesus said to them, one of you will betray me. Do you remember that account? And what happened? They began to say amongst each other, uh, am I the one that's going to betray him? Is it me? Am, am I the one, Lord? See, they were cognizant of that. Even though they seemed bewildered at it, yet at the word of Jesus, they were like, somebody's going to drift away? Somebody's actually going to deny you? Lord, is it me? Take note, because it also gives me pause. I want to emphasize this, that the writer of the letter did not say, unless you drift away. Yeah, you guys need to be careful that you don't drift away. He did not do that. In fact, uh, he includes himself and I include myself. And he says, let me emphasize this, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Lord, is it me? Lord, don't let it be me. Lord, I don't want to drift away. He is removing exemptions here and makes this apply to every believer everywhere. What am I saying? Shocker maybe to some, but anyone can drift. Anyone can drift. Drifting, let's talk about that. It's an interesting word that is used here. It makes me think of a boat, doesn't it? Drift, boat, yeah. <laughs> that just kind of gets carried along with the current. Or even swimming. It makes me think of that, swimming in the ocean. I, I can tell you what happened to me one time. Uh, we were at Huntington Beach. I don't know. I, I, I'm just going to guess here. Random guess. I was probably like 10 years old or something. And I ran down to the beach. I jumped in the water and I just loved it. And I was playing in the water and splashing around and just having a great time. I don't know how long I was in there, but it was a little while. And then I remember coming out of the water and onto shore. And I was like, hey, where'd everybody go? I mean, I, I went into the water right here, so everybody should be right there. And I, was, I like, almost panicked for a moment. And I was looking up and down, where did everybody, did they leave without me? <laughs> and I actually, by running back and forth, I actually found out that they were almost a block away. You know, I had actually drifted in the current, you know, playing in the water, swimming a little bit. And there I had drifted away. I didn't even know that it had happened. So drifting, the idea of it is it is slow. Drifting is quiet. Drifting is hard to detect. And the trouble with drifting is by the time that you actually do catch on, you find yourself or may find yourself someplace that you never intended to go, doing things that you never thought that you would do. Here is what has been said to giving in to temptations. Sin can take you farther than you thought you would go. It can cost you more than you thought it would cost you. It can keep you longer than you thought it would keep you. And it often hurts the ones that you have said you love the most. That's the picture of drifting. Here's another way to think of drifting. It, the word carries in it the meaning of to float by. So drifting means you float by or float past something. And you know what I think of? I think of missed opportunities to honor God. I think of missed opportunities to participate with God in the blessings and in the things that he has lined up for you on any given day. You can miss out on some opportunity to help somebody else out, somebody else that's in need. You may miss out on the opportunity of grounding yourself in the love of God. You may find yourself missing your freedom in God. And you may miss finding that God can be your all in all. You can find your satisfaction in him. Sad thing. So drifting happens well, let's put it this way. Drifting happens naturally. How about that? Drifting is a natural occurrence when you are not anchored to something solid. The Lord Jesus Christ and his word, the rock and the word. 
it, it, if you are not securely abiding in Jesus, by the way, you can find that in, uh, where is that, John 15? If you're not finding yourself securely anchored to and abiding in Jesus, drifting is very likely to happen. And the drifting currents that take us away, there's three main ones. They are the world, the flesh, and the devil, who we will continually be fighting until we take our last breath here and take our first breath there. So here's what I'm saying about floating. It takes no effort to float. No effort at all. Without any effort, you'll just float by. Uh, one need only do nothing in order to drift. It's been said, any dead fish can float downstream. It takes a live fish to swim against the current of the world, the current of your flesh, and the current of the devil. You see, one of the greatest challenges here is having knowledge, and man, oh man, I'll tell you what, I've run into a lot of people with a lot of Bible knowledge. Unfortunately, I've run into some without the wholehearted endeavor to invest the Word of God into their lives every day. That's a huge problem for a lot of folks, and they think somehow they can skate out of doing that just by having knowledge. Uh-uh. Not going to happen. Doesn't work. You're faking yourself out. You're drifting away. It makes these verses really rise in importance and rise in seriousness as far as our salvation, our eternal life, our faith, our walk with Jesus Christ. The Son of God, the living Word, God in human flesh, today is speaking. Are you listening? He's speaking today. Are you listening? And are you willing not just to hear, but are you willing to heed the word of the Savior? This is just a tremendous exhortation. Here it is again. We must, that includes me, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. I remember first uh, putting faith in Jesus Christ. Do you remember that in your life, what that was like? The excitement of it, the passion of it. The, uh, you know, a lot of folks say it feels like a, a backpack of rocks was taken off my back. And just this, oh my gosh, freedom. Absolutely. But one of the things that I experienced, and this has not changed through the years, is that I remembered thinking, I'm about to read my Bible. And as I do, God is speaking to me. And here's how it hit me. Wait a minute. Big, big, loving God. He's about to talk to me. Excuse me, I can't take any, answer any other phone calls. I'm about to take a phone call from God. That's how I thought of the Word of God. That's how I think today of the Word of God. It should, I think this should be a news flash. Okay, here's the news flash. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, the creator of the universe is now speaking by his son to whoever will listen. That's one of the biggest news flashes for the whole world. And so this asks us, asks me, asks you, have you been drifting away from that? Have you been drifting away from those things from the Lord? Look at verse 2. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience reserve, received a just reward. <laughs> you know, if you want to work for being good, if you think you're a good person because you do good things, if you want to work for your relationship with God or acceptance into heaven or a way of being right if you feel like you need to work for that then i want you to know that god does indeed give a reward let's put it this way god gives a payment to everybody who would try and live that way you know what that payment is because god's a just judge 
He sees everything exactly clearly. He knows the motives of the heart. He knows our fallen nature. And because he's a just judge, he's honest, holy, just judge. He gives just wages for what somebody does. The Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. The wages of sin is death. So you can either earn what you deserve or somebody came along and paid your fine. It wasn't me that paid my fine for my sins. It was Jesus who paid the fine for my sins. And now the judge says, hey, your fine has been paid. <laughs> I go, oh, my fines have been paid? Yeah, and then Jesus steps forward and he says, Paul, I paid your fine. Lord Jesus, you mean I'm free to go? I'm free to live with you for all eternity. Look, I, I'm sharing these things because I care about you. I care about your eternal soul. I care about where you spend eternity. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Let him pay your fine. That's what I'm saying. Wow. So, uh, if not keeping the old covenant, not keeping the commandments, breaking the commandments of God, I don't care which one that you mentioned, you know, I don't care, honoring your father and your mother, or, you know, taking the Lord's name in vain or stealing something or lusting, whatever commandment you broke, it really doesn't matter. If not keeping the Old Testament covenant, which was given by angels through Moses, spoken by the prophets, if that brought judgment, just judgment, just reward, just wages to the disobedient, when not kept, just think, if, if it, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, entrusted to us to not only receive it ourselves, but to pass it along to others, what if we skipped out on paying attention to that now that we say we're his? What's left to us then? A greater word than angels or Moses or prophets brought a greater person, that's Jesus, not prophets or angels, having a greater promise will bring a greater condemnation if neglected. Yeah, that's what this is saying. You see, not only have we been saved from something, we've been saved from judgment, right? And hallelujah. Thank you, God, for that. But we've not only been saved from something, we've been saved to something. We've been saved to someone. We've been saved with Jesus. Do you know the Bible says, you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. The price is the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies. That's what it says. The story is told of a sinful landowner who, who died, and it was read in his will that he had left his many acres of land, you ready for this, to the devil. It was disputed in court, naturally. They didn't quite know what to do with it. How do you give land to the devil? Finally, the judge brought forth his decision. Quote, the best way to carry out the wishes of the deceased is to allow the land to grow weeds, to allow the soil to erode, the house and the barn to rot. It is my ruling opinion that the best way to leave something to the devil is to do nothing. We can leave our lives to the devil in the very same way. Yes, we can. Just do nothing. Drift by whatever current seems to come along at the time. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, Paul the Apostle writes, We should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about by every wind of doctrine. You like those sound effects? <laughs> That's the picture, though. You, you, you can't have it both ways. Verse 3, here's what it says. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? 
which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. That would be the disciples. Take note of that word neglect. It's a big word. So I want you right now, tell me straight up. Tell me straight up. If you neglect a relationship, what happens to the relationships that you neglect? If you neglect a relationship, what happens to it? It dies. A neglected relationship dies. So drifting begins when our salvation is no longer counted as so great a salvation that God has given me. Ever thought this? Man, I remember way back. Man, there were once upon a time I was on fire for Jesus. I would go to studies. I would pray for people. I would encourage people. I was a sponge for the word of God. Yeah, I wanted everybody to hear about so great a salvation. Great. That may have been in the 20th century. Now we're in the 21st century. Or what about this? What about yesterday? How did you react with your so great a salvation yesterday? How did you react today with your so great a salvation? Again, uh, this, is, this is speaking to we, me. This is speaking to all of us. Uh, let me, because uh, I know a bunch of you. And uh, some of you I don't know. Some of you are new subscribers to our YouTube channel. And God bless you. I'm so glad that you're with us. Uh, but I know a bunch of you. And I know your heart for the Lord. And I know you love the Lord. And I know you don't want to drift, and I don't know you don't want to neglect. As a matter of fact, yesterday I got a phone call from, from a dear brother that I know and love. And you know what he said to me? He said, I really want to get closer to God than I've ever gotten close to him before. I was like, wow. I could just hear the earnestness in his voice. And then... Uh, this was probably about a week ago or so now. I talked to another brother who's going through a tremendous uh, trial. And yet I heard him speak and I heard his faith. And I said to him, hey, you have kept your Christian boots on, haven't you? You've not taken them off. Your faith has not faltered. You're, you're on. You're on, brother. Your boots are on. And then uh, last week, I heard from a Christian sister who is also going through a tremendous trial. And you know what really impressed me about her? Though she is in the fire of this trial, man, you should hear her pray. Oh, I, I've, I've got to use the word impressive. I don't know if that's the right word to talk about somebody else's prayer. But you could just sense the Spirit of God as she prayed. You could just sense uh, her love for the Lord. And she wasn't even praying for herself. She was praying for other people. Man, praise God. This teaching is meant to be a cautionary encouragement. Because as time goes by, as time goes by, it's possible to cool off. As time goes by, we may start to do nothing for the Lord, with the Lord, by the Lord, on account of the Lord. We may start to do nothing and then we will drift. And in our heart, we may not be as thankful as we once were. And we may not be following Jesus as closely as we know we ought to be. I mean, I'm thinking, I'm thinking following Jesus, you should be right up on his heels. What do you think? That's the heartbreaking thing to the Lord as we begin to drift away. His heart is broken um, to the Lord we love. And I'm not on anybody's case. I hope you know that. I, If you've known me well enough, <laughs> I'm not on anybody's case. I'm not after anybody. But this is our 
exhortation, believer. And it is based upon what we do with the celebration of the identity of Jesus Christ, understanding what he has done for me, what he has done for you, and that he wants to speak to us, to connect with us, to reach our hearts today and every day. Years ago, uh, there was a group, and the name of the group was the Drifters. Does anybody remember the, Dr the Drifters? Jeannie's raising her hand. The Drifters. And they did a song called This Magic Moment. So I want you to look up that song, This Magic Moment. Uh, the Drifters song is a song about falling in love, and we're to fall in love with Jesus. And in that song, the, these words are in there. Maybe you remember this. This magic moment. And it says, will last forever. Forever till the end of time. That's the kind of excitement. That's the kind of way that we are to treat our relationship with the Lord. Do you want to know which uh, miracle I like the best? Because I'm going to share it with you. <laughs> My favorite miracle and something that I'll never get over seeing is the miracle of a changed life. A life that was once spent chasing the wind and collecting vanity. And then the person meets up with Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, knowing that no man comes to the Father but by Jesus. And then they are never the same. Believer, the salvation, the relationship that has been gifted to us by Jesus, in Jesus, through Jesus, is a relationship that will never have us separated from the love of God. Let me share Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded, I'm persuaded, are you persuaded tonight? That neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Believer, will you grab a hold of that tonight and then never let that go? This is the kind of faith we are to exhibit. This is the kind of faith we're to live out. This is the kind of faith that will not drift. It's the kind of faith that listens to the word of God and is willing to obey it and willing to heed it. This is the kind of faith that will not neglect our relationship with God, but keeps it as vibrant as when we first believed and actually even more so than that. This is a loving exhortation from the word of God. So can I give us real quickly uh, four quick points? Uh, just as kind of a recap for us. Here we go. Ready? Uh, we are to heed the word of God, lest we drift. And this says to me, stay active in your love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, I want you to know that drifting can happen to anyone. So you got to keep your guard up. Uh, You've got to anchor yourself securely to Jesus. Here's another way to put it. Keep your guard up and your anchor down. <laughs> Here's number three. <laughs> this is another cute one. Be a protector, not a neglector of your faith. I threw that in there because it's such a clever little rhyme, isn't it? But I hope you remember it. Be a protector, not a neglector of your faith. And number four, keep your relationship with God fresh. As a matter of fact, can we all say fresh together on the count of three? Here we go. One, two, three. Fresh. Keep your relationship with God fresh. Uh, you know, a number of people have told us now that during this time they've developed a daily devotional time. We do our best to help out with that. We send out a broadcast uh, every day except for Wednesdays and Sundays, as we teach on those days. But we send out a daily devotional, and people have been telling us that they are getting, they're getting excited about their daily devotion. You know, uh, 
one gal uh, sent us a note and let us know that that every day she she doesn't listen to the devotion on that day she staggers it so the next morning she she gets up and goes in the backyard uh, I bet with a cup of coffee uh, that's how I would do it and then listens to that devotion and then carries through with her own prayers that's awesome okay as everything changes don't lose that don't lose your daily devotional if you want to get in on the daily devotional let us know Jeannie can send that out to you anyway I love you guys don't lose your loving daily relationship with the Savior don't drift you don't need to in fact I'd like to talk to anybody who maybe doesn't know the Lord I've already said that I want to see you in heaven I want us to come together and greet each other on the other side of the pearly gates with Jesus and all who have put faith in him over the centuries. What does that take? You accept that Jesus is your substitute for your sins. You repent. That means make a U-turn from the way that you're living and live the way he asks you to. You ask him to come into your heart. Use your own words. Pray and ask the Lord to forgive you and to come into your heart and to be your Savior, your Lord, and your friend. And that's a relationship that never ends, if you mean it from your heart. Now, I'd also like to talk to the drifters. Not the singing group, <laughs> but the literal drifters. And you know who you are. <laughs> it's so easy to drift. It's so... I'll use the word stinking. I'm going to do it anyway. It is so stinking easy to drift, isn't it? Do you remember that old hymn, prone to wander, prone to leave the one I love? Yeah, that's us. Come on back. Jesus misses you. The church family misses you and needs you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you for your love. I thank you that your word just keeps on teaching us, keeps on revealing to us the truth of your love for us and for your desire for us to lead a new life in Christ. I pray, Father, for everyone who hears this, that they would be even more attracted to the Savior. Bless every heart, for I ask this in Jesus' wonderful name, and everyone says, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming over. See you soon.